In this video, I'm going to go over how to build Unreal Engine 5 from source. In the last video, I kind of skimmed over installing Unreal Engine, so I'd like to go back and talk about it a bit more in depth. I'll also cover the basics of using Git and Visual Studio. Now, you might be wondering, why build the engine from source code when you can just install it using the Epic Games Launcher? And the answer is you can do that, and that'll work fine for most cases. But there are some reasons that you might want to build it from source instead. First, if you plan on building a dedicated server for a network-based game, you're going to need the version compiled from source code. Another reason is you might want to check out features before they're packaged into an official release. You can do this by checking out different branches in the source code repository. Last, you might come across some bugs you want to fix, or even some features you want to implement in the core engine itself. And having this setup will make it easy for you to test and submit patches back to Unreal Engine. So let's get started. The first step is to get an Epic Games account and log into the Unreal Engine website. You'll also need an account on GitHub, because that's where the Unreal Engine source code is. Now go back to the Unreal Engine website, go to your account, personal, and connections. Under this you'll see a connect button for GitHub. Click on that and go through the steps to connect the two accounts together. Once you do this, you'll be able to access the code repository for the Unreal Engine. Scroll down and go through the readme file. There's a lot of good information here, and we'll be following the section about getting up and running with Windows. As it says here, we'll first need to install Visual Studio so we can compile the engine. Go to the Visual Studio website and download the Community Edition. This is free to use. I already have it installed here, but let me go into the Visual Studio installer to show you what I put on. It's good to know where this is because you might need to add additional things in the future. I'm going to click the Modify button here, but you'll see the same options when you're installing from scratch. Here you'll see the workloads and different components I've already installed. First, you need the .NET desktop development because some of the Unreal tools are written in C Sharp. Next, you'll also want game development with C++. If you click on individual components, you'll see I also had to install a specific .NET framework version. Yours might be different depending on the version of Unreal Engine you're using. Last, I also installed Git for Windows because this is the version control software that Unreal Engine uses. Let's now go back to the Unreal Engine repository on GitHub. As you can see, there's a green code button you can press. If you're familiar with SSH and using Git, you might want to set up an SSH public key. This will allow you to push and pull code from GitHub. If you do that, you can use the SSH URL provided here. If none of that really makes sense, just use the HTTPS URL instead. Both of these URLs will allow you to clone a copy of the entire Unreal Engine repository. I've been using Unix and Linux for quite a while, so I prefer using command line tools. Here I'm going to be using PowerShell. But there are also graphical tools you could use for Git if you're more comfortable doing that. Here I'm going to go into my D drive, go into the source directory I've already created, and then run git clone and paste the URL I copied from the GitHub web page. I recommend having about 200 gigabytes free to do all this. Building the code alone is going to take over 100 gigabytes, and then you're going to want some extra space for your own projects. Depending on the speed of your internet connection, this could take a while. Once it's done, go into the Unreal Engine directory that was cloned. At some point, you might want to get familiar with Git since it's really useful while developing code. It helps keep everything organized and you can see all the history of your changes. For now, I'm just going to cover some of the basics. If you run git tag, you'll see all the versions of the engine that have been released. Think of these as snapshots in time that will never change. You can check these out and build that particular version of the engine if you want to. If you run git branch, you can see all the active development branches. Some of these may not be very active anymore, but some certainly are. For example, you can see the UE5 main. Instead of using the pre-release version, you could be using the UE5 main branch to get all the latest features. They warn that it might not be the most stable branch and you could run into bugs, but if you want the latest and greatest, this is what you'd want to use. For now, we're going to use the latest UE5 release tag. We do this by running git checkout and then the name of the tag. Once this is done, run setup.bat. This will install dependencies, as well as do some additional setup. This can take quite a while to run, and at some point, you might get prompted about it making changes to your computer. Just click yes. Once this is done, run generate project files.bat. This will generate all the project files needed for opening this in Visual Studio. If you open Windows File Explorer and navigate to where you clone the Unreal Engine, you'll now see a ue5.sln file. This is a Visual Studio solution. Double click on it, and Visual Studio will open up. Yours might not look exactly the same since I've tweaked how things are laid out. Let me show you what I've done. The first thing you want to do is make the solution configurations drop down wider so you can see what you've selected. To do this, right click anywhere on some empty space on the taskbar and then go to customize. Select commands and then toolbar. Next, select standard from the toolbar drop down 
and then scroll down to find Solution Configurations. Click on it, and then click Modify Selection. I changed my width to 128. This allows you to see the full configuration name when you select it. The next thing you might want to change is how the window panels and tabs are laid out. As you see, you can select tabs and move them around. You can resize the panels, or you can create new panels and move tabs between them. I prefer one large panel in the middle for my source code and output windows, and then one to the right hand side so I can easily browse the source files. We're now going to start building the engine. Right click on the UE5 target icon in the upper right, and then click build. This is going to take quite a while depending on the speed of your computer. For me it took almost two hours. Once this is done, go back to the repository in the Windows File Explorer. Go into Engine, Binaries, and then Win64. This is everything that was just built. If you scroll down, you'll find a UnrealEditor.exe. This is the editor that you can start running to create new projects. I like to either pin this to the Start menu or create a shortcut on my desktop so it's easy to access. When you start this up, you'll see the Unreal Project Browser. If you have existing projects, you can open those, or you can create a new project. In the next video, I'll go over how to create a new C++ project, some of the common classes, and how to get it running from Visual Studio. I'll also cover how to run it under a debugger, so you can see how both the engine code and your code works under the hood. If you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments below. Thanks for watching.